Okay, so GitHub just had their main event of the year, GitHub Universe. And this year, this is not about how Copilot got smarter, it was not about sort of any specific model or things like that. It was all about how software development is now going to be AI managed, AI audited, and AI measured. And a number of the things that they announced are really positioning GitHub to be the leader and sort of the center of the universe for all things AI code related. So in this video, I'm going to look at some of the announcements. I'm going to talk mostly about Agent HQ. I'm also going to talk about how GitHub is basically making AI a key part of the software development lifecycle and embedding it into almost everything that they're doing. And then also I'm going to cover how GitHub themselves realize that they need to take on AI slop, especially from things like vibe coding apps and tools that aren't making high quality software. So first off, it was really interesting to see that just for GitHub alone, they're now adding people at more than one a second. They now have 180 million users of GitHub. And this totally fits with a lot of the themes that we're seeing that as people who are perhaps makers and not programmers are getting into making software, they're learning that actually GitHub can be really good for version control, for storing your code, for sort of automatic deployment, all the things that us traditional developers have perhaps known for a long time about GitHub. So it was fascinating to see them talk about like how fast that is growing and also how it's growing in new regions and new places around the world. That said, the star of the show really is Agent HQ. And this is what they led with. This is really what they're positioning most of the conference around. So what is Agent HQ? Basically, GitHub is positioning itself as the place where your AI agents will live. They'll get assigned work. They're going to be supervised. They're going to be allowed or even sometimes denied access to code, access to resources, etc. Now, they're starting this all out for coding agents, right? But you definitely get the vibe that there are lots of hints in there that, hey, this is actually something that goes beyond coding agents. And if I had to make a guess, my guess is we're going to see something very similar to Agent HQ for coding agents coming out of Microsoft for more general business agents and sales agents and stuff like that. So this Agent HQ and its mission control is really sort of like a dashboard to spin up multiple agents, give them tasks, and then track them as they're going along. People are clearly aware of that often these things are going to go off the rails a bit. You need to be able to have human in the loop. That's a key part of all of this. The other thing that's fascinating here is that this is not just a Microsoft game, an OpenAI game. This is a multi-agent, multi-vendor game. GitHub is explicitly saying that you'll be able to plug in different agents from companies like Anthropic, Google, even for startups like Cognition. And they actually had a whole slide basically saying, hey, if you're a startup and you're building something cool with code, get in touch with us so that you can make it fit into our ecosystem. And I think that rings true in that many of the startups that have become really popular at this stuff over the past two years really are just startups, right? They're not established companies with a big history of working with other big tech companies like GitHub, like Microsoft, etc., They even had the chief product officer from Anthropic there basically talking about how when you run the Claude Code agents, you're going to be able to use the skills and deploy those skills in this agent HQ. So they promoted a lot of things around how you're going to be able to define your house rules via things like the agents markdown doc right through to a whole bunch of different things that you can set in this Agent HQ to control how things are going to be done across your organization. So this is really kind of cool in that it's going beyond just one project, one agent. You're now getting these rules or this sort of compliance across a whole suite of agents. Now, another thing that is sort of key here is that this is going to have a whole sort of admin control. So if you're running an organization, you're going to be able to sort of enforce more sort of security, compliance, and even sort of controlling, okay, what repos can which agents start to be used for? And again, while they talked about this as being for code, the underlying theme there is that you can have any kind of documents in a repo. 
So there's no reason why you can't have a repo for your sales team, a repo for the marketing. In fact, there was an example even shown of how they basically gave an agent access to a whole bunch of brand standard guidelines so that when it was making updates, it could do that in a way that complied with the actual brand that it was working for. So I think the key takeaways from the Agent HQ are that this is not just shipping a smarter co-pilot. This is really GitHub saying, we're going to be the operations layer, the operations center for your sort of AI developer workforce. And as I talked about in the recent video about Langchain 1.0, we're certainly st starting to see this fight to be who's going to run the agents for you in what sort of cloud, in what sort of environment. So Agent HQ is basically GitHub's way of making their land grab to control this whole space of running the agents. And in many ways, they're suited for this in that most of the coding agents often that are async are already acting on GitHub repos. They're acting with pull requests. They're acting with all the things that go around the GitHub ecosystem. All right, the second sort of main takeaway here is that AI is becoming a key part of the software development life cycle. This is being done now with agents plus human in the loop check-in. You can think about this shift as moving away from sort of AI helps you type code faster or even generate code locally to now more where we're starting to see AI participate in the entire life cycle, kind of like a junior engineer that you manage and you oversee. Now, this is not a new idea. Obviously, Devon was built around this idea, and certainly other coding agent startups have also been working around this idea. But it is interesting that clearly now GitHub is saying that this AI coding stuff is not just a little add-on. This is something that's going to be integrated into the entire life cycle from when you plan stuff, like GitHub announced recently with their GitHub spec kit. Awesome really interesting product, certainly something that I think many people should be using. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a video or a deep dive of how to actually use GitHub spec kit. But beyond just that planning and designing phase, clearly these coding agents are being used for both the implementation of code and implementation of features, etc., and then sort of the refactoring of projects where you're basically able to apply these coding agents to actually make useful features. Now, the third part of the software development cycle, which is really interesting that GitHub is getting in on, is this whole idea of reviewing code, assessing the quality of code, and then dealing with the security issues of code. So they mention quite openly something which I think lots of people are talking about on the internet is that a lot of these coding tools that people are making and putting out there are really just generating slop code. Now, maybe 80% of the code is actually quite good and it has some useful features, but the code really needs to be reviewed to see like, okay, can the quality of it be improved overall? And often most importantly, the code needs to be checked for security issues. So this is something many people have seen sadly, but also quite funny on X and stuff where people have basically pushed code where their keys are open, where they had clearly no understanding of how to build the app in a way that sort of made it secure, et cetera. So a key part of this software development life cycle is this sort of hardening of the code to make it better for security. And while this can be at a project by project level, it's also at a sort of organization level. And this is what I would say is the third theme of the event, which was really interesting. And this is understanding that if you don't have sort of senior people approving of the actual tools and stuff like that, really people can do whatever they want, but none of that code is ever going to make it into production. And therefore it's not really increasing productivity. What GitHub has realized is that you need to help organizations empower people with these tools but do it in a way where your senior management can still control the governance, permissions, and auditability. So GitHub is getting in on this with sort of centralized policies, audit trails, code quality scoring. They even talk about having their agents be able to sort of work out any tech debt that you're creating that you should be aware of. And I think this is fascinating to see, like, where do they actually go with this kind of stuff? They're clearly starting out with dashboards and metrics that basically sort of allow senior level management to see who's actually using 
these agents? Are the PRs being accepted? Measure, you know, okay, how much leverage is actually being gained from these tools? And then probably to be able to identify who in your organization has some really useful patterns of how they're able to use these tools to get PRs that do get accepted and do get shipped into production. So you can think of this as GitHub clearly seeing that the director level up of where people have been saying, oh, no, no, we can't do this because we can't audit it. Okay, now you can audit it. We can't do these things because we can't prove the ROI on these tools. Well, now you will be able to do those things. Okay, just to sum all this up, I would say that clearly this event was around Agent HQ as being the main thing, but really not just about the fact of any particular agent being smarter, but just about how the tooling around agents needs to basically support where these things are going. And that means being able to monitor them better. That means being able to get better metrics. That means being able to have better human in the loop. And that while all of these things on GitHub are starting with coding agents, clearly this is going to open up to a lot of different things. GitHub has clearly made the decision that we're not going to be always the people that make the best single agent. We're happy to support Claude Code, Codex, whatever agents Google's making, etc., and even ones from startups. But they have clearly planted the flag here that they want to be the center of the universe that runs all those agents and oversees all of those agents. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. And do we see products from other providers come out that are very similar to this? All right. As always, I'd love to hear from you what you think in the comments. Do you think you're going to use Agent HQ yourself? If you're working in a big organization, are you currently using one particular agent or multiple agents? Earlier this year, when I was in San Francisco, I saw people go from not being allowed to use any agents to now being encouraged to use these coding tools and coding agents literally over the space of probably two months. So I'm very interested to hear from other people what you're seeing in your day job or in the projects that you're working on, etc. Anyway, as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.